And we are live. Hey, what's up, Warriors? Anthony Chansomuth here from Simple Creative Marketing. And uh, today I'm going to talk through how to craft a compelling case study. And I'm going to share with you my framework uh, that we use at SCM to write case studies for our clients. All right. And so the reason I'm talking about this is because not all case studies are created equal, right? So I'm sure you've read a bunch. Uh, you may have come across some on people's websites, on their blogs, whatever it may be. Uh, and some are really compelling and some aren't. So what makes a difference, right? So let's walk through, uh, first of all, what really makes a compelling case study. For me, it comes down to how the case study is structured, okay? And it really, when, you know, it, We've experimented with this over the last few years to look at, you know, what are the different ways we can actually share customer success? Uh, how do we share our customer wins, you know, through working with different clients and some share testimonials, some, some share um, long form case studies. And uh, I've written a whole blog post about the difference between uh, which is better testimonials or case studies let me know what you think what do you think is better a testimonial or a case study uh, especially in terms of helping to convert potential leads and sales for your business all right drop that in the comments if you're watching this live uh, but i definitely want to hear from you what your thoughts are around that now um, again we want to talk about the framework and the best way to share a framework with you is to actually share a example uh, of a case study that. I recently did for uh, B Ninjas. So let me just bring that up. Uh, okay, here we go. So let me tell you the story of how this all came to be. So B Ninjas is a online booking, bookkeeping service and financial advisory service for um, six figure plus e-commerce sellers. All right. And also uh, they also work with agencies and digital businesses and essentially I had an opportunity to interview Jesse Hanley, who is the founder of a company called Bento, which is one of the uh, the clients working with B Ninjas. All right, and it was a really interesting exercise because it involved uh, a lot of different elements. And what I'm going to share with you is just a, a quick snapshot. Let me just uh, bring that up here of what we did. Uh, Okay, so I'm, yep, I'm hoping you can see my screen here. Great. So you can see here is the uh, the case study and straight away, I want you to pay attention to uh, what grabs you, all right? So the first thing you're going to see is either the image or the headline, all right? And the headline reads, reducing Bento's bookkeeping time to five minutes per month. Now, if you've ever tried to do bookkeeping yourself for your small business, uh, you probably know it usually takes a lot more time than that, right? So uh, especially if you're not, you know, someone who's great with numbers or you, you just don't love zero or whatever tool you're using. Uh, and, you know, for me, I know if I jump into my bookkeeping accounting so software, it can really like do my head in, <laughs> to be honest. And it can take me a lot of time to work out uh, all the things and to look at the reports and all these sort of things and trying to get my head around understanding it. Thankfully, I've been working with B Ninjas for the last few years. And so I've, you know, had the luxury, I suppose, of educating myself through all the content that we've been producing for the B Ninjas clients uh, and community. And, um, you know, here's a really just Back to the, the, the case study here, uh, we wanted to really capture uh, and present a story of how B Ninjas was able to support uh, Bento in you know growing their business, right? Um, and one of the and, and the, the the one the compelling uh, I guess benefit that came from the interview I did with Jesse uh, was that it really was about how much time that was saved from him having to go through and, and do his books, okay? So now he's literally doing, um, he's only actually only looking at his, uh, uh, you know, zero accounts um, around five minutes a month, okay? You know, and that could be a bit longer, but we went, we, went, we went from hours down to minutes. So do you think that's, that's compelling, all right? So you start off with a headline, um, which speaks to the specific... Uh, challenge that most of your 
ideal buyers or ideal prospects are facing, okay, or your clients, right? Your clients come for you for a reason, a problem that you solve. So you want to sort of nail that and get down to this is the thing that we really do for our clients, okay? And it could be, you know, you increase revenue, increase profit, uh, save time, you give them more um, uh other types of benefits, right? So only you will know what that is based on your interactions with your clients and the, the value that you bring to your clients, right? So we start off with that really punchy headline and we get into uh, the story, nice picture of, of Jesse here chilling. Uh, <laughs> and we get into, uh, you know, information about the company, um, the challenge. So I'm going to walk through this framework with you in a moment, but you can see, um, you know, we, we talk about what the, the specific challenges Jesse had uh, when he came to Bean Ninjas or before he, he signed up with Bean Ninjas, um, you know, before he used the service, the solution, um, and from the perspective of what were the actual steps taken by Bean Ninjas to resolve the, the challenges, all right, and then the results, okay, what was the final outcome, which was in the headline anyway, but here we're expanding on specific comments that the, the client made um, and you know, things that were particularly meaningful for that particular client, right? Uh, and then we even have a, a screenshot here of the client referring Bean Ninjas out on social media to his own community uh, and network, right? Um, and then we end up with a call to action, uh, which is definitely something you want to do at the end of a case study. So let's now flip over to the framework. Uh, you've seen sort of the example and that, let me just fill you in on something. That particular case study resulted in a new client um, coming to be ninjas because what happened was we shared that uh, case study out through the through the Be Ninjas Twitter account. The, we tagged uh, the client, so Jesse or and Bento. He retweeted it to his own followers, and immediately, like within five minutes, um, someone in his in his um, one of his followers and, and uh, people in his network uh, said, "Hey, they read the case study and they said, hey, I need this too.'" Uh, and they ended up booking a call with Be Ninjas and uh, ended up becoming a client uh, within the next few days. So that's how powerful a compelling case study can be, and I wanted to share that with you because that's definitely a win um, for the work that that we do with developing case studies for our clients, right? So uh, now let's flip over to the framework. So I'm gonna uh, stop sharing this screen and I'm gonna bring up the framework that I've been putting together. And now I wanna just uh, make sure that you can see that. Okay, so here we go. So I'm calling this, it's a seven Ps framework for crafting a compelling case study. So let me walk you through it, right? Step one, uh, or well, the first P is to have a punchy headline, all right? and like I mentioned with the with the, the, the Bento case study, uh, you really want to grab people's attention with a metric-driven result. And it's important that we have a metric in here because where I see a lot of case studies fall flat is it's really vague. Uh, and it's something like, you know, uh, we helped a client or, or the client was happy and the client was successful. But, you know, what does that actually mean? It, it really doesn't mean much unless you can get very specific and granular about what success looked like for the client right and i know certainly in you know working with uh, health and wellness in, in uh, with coaches in that space sometimes it is about the feeling and sometimes it is about um you know a transformation in the mindset and these sort of things and i actually had a conversation with a coach uh, a health and wellness coach in a facebook group recently literally a few days ago about this and i said you know because she was saying one of, she she was launching a, a membership site uh, and she had a few people already in her community but she was struggling to get people to convert on her landing page and I had a look at the landing page and my my number one feedback to her was you know it's not very clear what specific result is uh, that you produce for your clients like it's not clear you've got a few things that you say that you do but it's not the, the promise is not obvious to me it's it's you know, you want to make it when someone reads your website or your marketing, uh, like it just straight away, I know what the benefit is to me, my business and my life, right? If I don't, if I'm not able to get that from your headline, there's a problem, okay? Um, and then, so a case study, think of a case study as a, uh, a way to demonstrate that you can actually deliver on the promise, right? So punch a headline that's tied to a metric, the, you know, specific result that's produced for the client. Uh, again, with the Bento case study, you know, we started the headline with reducing Bento's bookkeeping time to five minutes per month. So it was very clear what the benefit was, 
Okay. And then the second thing we want, we want to do is to, uh, the second P here is to profile customer. All right. So we want to actually highlight the client. And this is where we kind of give them their, their flowers, but also their, you know, five seconds of fame, if you will. Uh, we highlight the client. And importantly, we want to highlight the category that the client is in. So we're, if you are in B2B, um, and live in the B2B space, then you want to highlight what types of businesses you support. You know, do you support agencies like we do at SEM? Do you uh, support professional services like we do at SEM, right? So you would have, you know, this particular client, the client's name is this type of business, and this is what they do, and this is who they serve. So that's, so what you're doing is you're giving them a bit of a, a profile. So someone reading that who can identify with that particular client will go, hey, You've worked with a business like mine, so therefore I can, and I would like to work with you too, right? Um, it's showing, not just telling, right? And this is an important thing about authentic influence and, and, and influence, you know, in an authentic way is you want to demonstrate results and show people who you work with, okay? If you're not out there and you work with everyone, and this is a problem with businesses uh, and people who you know, uh, the message is, hey, I work with anyone. Anyone who wants to give me money, I'll work with you, <laughs> right? Uh, but that doesn't work. It actually works against you. What you want to do is get very specific and say, hey, this is who I work with. Um, put a, draw a line in the sand and say, look, you know, I work with X, you know, Y and Z. If you work with, you know, multiples, that's fine. But get clear on who your primary is and get clear on who you're targeting the case study towards, right? So I'm working with a couple of clients right now um, and developing case studies for them. And one question I asked both of those clients was, you know, straight away, right, who do you want to write this case study for, right? Who are you trying to bring into your business? What types of clients are you trying to attract, okay? Um, so let's uh, uh, kind of reverse engineer. Start off with that, right? And what problems do you solve for that client? Who's your avatar? And then let's find the, the client that you already worked with and that have already produced a result for to, to do a case study on, okay? So... Profile the customer, highlight the client type and the category. Okay, this is super important. Let's move over to number three. Uh, the third P is problem statement. Here is where we, uh, you saw it in the example, uh, we basically show challenge, right? This, the, the, the subheading or the heading subtitle was challenge and or you can have problem and you basically get clear on the challenges and the, uh, the context uh, of the problem. You know, what was happening for the client before they hired you, what was uh, what were their considerations? If they were researching you and three other vendors, okay, what was going through their mind? What was it that they were looking for? Okay, um, this is where you're painting the before picture. Okay, I like to use the example of personal trainers, and they're showing their before and after client photos, you know, on their Instagrams, and they can so you can see before, you know. Um, they worked with the client, the client was overweight, et cetera, whatever the challenges were, and then you can see the after snapshot and you can see how they've evolved and, and the body has transformed and, and these sort of things. Now, you can do a similar thing here with, you know, if, you know, with your business, right? So when your client comes to you, you can take a snapshot of where they were at that point in time uh, and then where they are after the transformation, after the work you've done to help them improve a result, all right? Um, and... If you're a digital marketer or you're an agency, a uh, quick tip here, you can do snapshots of go back through Google Analytics to right before they hired you, right? Get a snapshot, okay? What was the traffic looking like? What was, you know, maybe the, the sales at that point in time? What was that looking like? Uh, and then you can do uh, uh, an after snapshot. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But problem statement is P number three. Number four is the process. Okay. And this is where you, as the business, you're going to share the steps you took to solve the problem in detail. Okay. So show that you're the expert. Okay. And a question I get asked here commonly is, you know, well, how much should I give away? If I don't want to give away the farm, should I do that? Whatever my intellectual uh, property, my IP, should I protect all that, those things? I don't want anyone stealing my stuff, <laughs> right? I get all the concerns. At the same time, if you don't give enough information in the process, stage of your case study all right then it, it becomes like a mystery it's like oh well you know someone reading the case study goes okay you created this result but i have no idea how you created that result right what were the steps you took and do i have to pay you money to find out those steps right that that's uh becomes a block for a lot of people okay so if you can do you know break it down into you know here were the three four five whatever steps that we went through to help the client achieve the outcome all right uh, and and you can be liberal with that you can sort of 
just don't completely avoid it. That's what I'm saying, right? You want to give an idea. Uh, and the main thing is if you can paint the picture of the level of work required to get the result, um, the person reading that's going, man, like I could try and do it on my own, but I've already, you know, I'm already here at this situation. I'm in this point in time where it hasn't obviously, like hasn't worked for me. Uh, and I've tried those things and I just need someone to do it for me or I just need to work with a coach or a mentor or someone to help me through those steps, right? Uh, and so in most cases, it, it, you're more like more likely to have you know 80 or 90 percent of people just say look i'll pay you money and i'll just hire you to do it for me rather than them go away and doing themselves you might have that 10 percent that will sure they'll go away they don't have the, the funds right now or whatever it may be that's fine right um but if they go away and do the steps and it works for them then they're going to credit you anyway right so that's a good thing okay so that's the process uh p number four the fifth P is payoff. And this is where, you know, we talk about what was the end result, okay? You, now, we shared the, the punchy headline at, at the beginning, all right, which is, you know, gives people an idea of what the end result was. But here, we're going to elaborate. We're going to actually use the client's words, you know, because um, we interview the client. We then elicit from them, you know, uh, statements from them around, you know, what was the benefit of that outcome, right? So you got this win. How did that help you? How did it help your business? How did it help you on a personal level? How did it help you um, emotionally? Okay. And so if you can bring out those emotional benefits, this is the gold, right? This is the gold. Okay. Because someone reading that can go, oh my gosh, like I'm struggling with these things. Um, and, you know, and, and those is, that's what I want, right? To give you another example, I did a, a case study interview for another client uh, named Andy and, and basically, um, I interviewed one of his clients. He has a program that, that he takes his his uh, his clients on, uh, and they end up going on. Uh, they go overseas. I think the, the French Alps and, and really cool places in New Zealand and whatnot. Um, but uh, his program basically helps someone who's sort of kind of stuck in their role as the business owner, super busy, uh, to really free up time and to become location independent and and have the business become uh, remote. All right now. When I interviewed uh, his client, one thing that came out was that by implementing, by following and completing Andy's program, they were able to then train, put together a system and train their VA to take over some of the admin work. And this is, was admin work that they were doing on the weekends. So they were doing it every Sunday or whatever it may be for you know half a day, four hours, three hours, whatever. And that was taking time away from their, their kid. Uh, their kids. Um, so this person, you know, one thing they said to me in the interview was, it, you know, I said, what's the benefit of the program? And, and you know, the first answer was, oh, yeah, it, it gave me a system. I'm like, great. So what? <laughs> right. And then they said, well, really what it meant was I could actually go and uh, get my Sundays back with my kid. And, and that's super valuable and really important to me as a mother. Right. And that's huge. Right. So that's, can you see the, there's the benefit, but then there's the, the the real like tan the emotional benefit that comes from that as well the the impact to the life uh, and to the person right so that that's the payoff you want to focus in on those things okay so uh, fifth P is payoff the sixth P is praise and here is where we get the client testimonial we actually get them to say okay well if you were and I learned this question from one of my uh, mentors a uh, guy by the name of Dan Norris who just released his Six book uh, called Compound Marketing. You, you definitely want to check that out if you haven't read that, uh, if not aware of it. Anyway, Dan uh, has this amazing question where he says, okay, if you're going to get a testimonial from someone, ask them this question, right? So if you were sitting in a pub with a mate and you wanted to, to let them know, um, tell them about your experience with me and, and my business and, and what we've done for you, what would you say? Okay, so uh, this is you know a really simple question, but the way it's framed is quite powerful. And I'll tell you why, because wh what you want your clients to say, you want them to say it in their own words, and you don't want them to say it with all this jargon and crap. Like it, it's, um, you know, if you go onto LinkedIn and you look at people's like recommendations, a lot of it is just, I don't know, best way to put it is devoid of emotion. A lot of it is just like, oh, they were great, blah, blah, um, very professional language and stuff. And it just doesn't make you go, that makes me feel good or it makes me feel excited, right? Um, but when someone just says, you know, the, this is what they did, this is how this person helped me or this company helped me, uh, this was the, the result, uh, and, and 
in their own words and if they were like they were saying it to a mate at a pub you know or, or at a barbecue uh, that's going to be much more compelling in terms of a testimonial in terms of praise so that's number six and then number seven final p is we want to propose our next step okay and this is what i call a call to action right so what's the next logical step for someone reading the case study so they're reading and they, they're reading reading the whole thing they're going this is really awesome i love the result that was produced i love the process okay what's next right do you invite them to book a call do you invite them to go download your guide on you know that particular problem that you solved or whatever it may be just make sure you incorporate that in your case study so that's the seven piece let's go through them again Number one, punch a headline. Two, profile customer. Number three, problem statement. Four, process. Five, payoff. Six, praise. Seven, propose your next step. That's the seven Ps. Uh, the framework for crafting a compelling case study. I'm Anthony Chance to move from Simple Creative Marketing. And uh, if you have any questions at all, let me know. And let me know what you think of the framework. And I'd love to see you go out there and, and, and put that in, in uh, and apply that to what you're doing. Okay, so. That's what it's all about. Oh, I'm giving a nice feedback here. <laughs> from saying, uh, very human-centered, real and practical. I love it. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And uh, I'll see you again on the next podcast. Now, tomorrow, I've got an interview with my good friend and amazing graphic designer, uh, Colleen Keith. So if you want to learn about why you should have, um, what you can do to make sure your website is engaging and keeping people on your site longer uh please tune in for that uh, check out my facebook page to get all the updates i'll see you real soon